Good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining our 15th Tuesday Zoom now, so early in the morning. What will we bring to you on Good Morning BSN? We will provide you with practical tools and insights to improve your skills in one of the four pillars of leadership, which we at BSN believe are crucial to making a difference. Something which you will be able to apply directly in your working life after this Zoom now. We will end our session at 8.53 sharp to allow you a break before your work starts for the day. Today's topic is leadership and the shadow self. It is all about responsible leadership, striving to become a better person, having responsibility towards your colleagues and making your companies and organizations thrive by developing sustainable business opportunities to solve challenges of today's world. Good Morning BSN is organized by the BSN Impact Center for Great Leadership. The center is an initiative of BSN generously founded by Hofstede Insight and sponsored by the new energy company, Chant Global. Congratulations to Hofstede Insights, who will, who will continue to embrace Hofstede's legacy and talk to the current time in changing their name to the culture factor. The Impact Center for Great Leadership is a place where BSN alumni and other managers and leaders from companies and society meet each other to share insights and to create new practical knowledge. You can also contact the Center for In-Company Programs to further grow the talent and your teams within the organization. Today, we are pleased to have Dr. George Woods, Chief Business Officer of St. John's Ambulance London, who recently graduated with his DBA from Business School Netherlands. George is a seasoned C-suite business leader and a coach, digital transformation strategist and consultant consumer behaviorist and university lecturer with 28 years of experience gained across retail, professional services, and management consulting, financial services, and humanitarian sectors. His progressive record of continuing professional development is balanced by impactful aptitudes in, in entrepreneurial innovation thinking, where he has cemented solid foundations in up-to-the-minute digital processes and tools required to fast-track sustainable, value-based, in-future-focused organizations. George has delivered multiple cost-effective large-scale technology transformation programs, demonstrating measurable impact on revenues within loan operations amid tough local and global economic conditions. He's an active coach and impassioned mentor to key South African strategic business leaders in management, as well as leadership and culture transformation specialists. George realizes his twin life passions of adding exceptional value and leaving a lasting positive legacy by continuously applying his commercial and strategic management skills in a professional practice across the globe. George has in 2022 of Her Majesty of the Queen's Jubilee Year been knighted for services to the Commonwealth and the Crown. George has in 2023 been admitted as a Freeman of the City of London through the Worshipful Company of Educators. He will be doing his presentation today. And then our reflector for today will be Dr. Renata Volpe. Renata specializes in the arena of people development, leadership, and change management. She is unique in that she combines strong academic ability in leadership with astute business acumen. She's a successful corporate player and business owner with 40 years worth of experience. Renata began her corporate career in the world of mining during the 80s serving as a divisional director of the Chamber of Mines. She turned up entrepreneur in 1995 and founded Dr. Renata Leadership Development Consulting. Long-term services retainers in companies like Anglo, Nike, MTN, Standard Bank appear in her prestigious clientele list. She holds a high media profile, writing regularly for host newspapers, publications, and magazines. She is regularly interviewed on radio and TV shows. Her books include The Entrepreneurial Mind Shift, and senseless sacrifice givers and takers in relationships. Dr. Renata Volpe is a futurist and trendsetter whose leading brand is synonymous with the development of leadership acumen. Those are our speakers and reflector for today. So George, without further ado, because I know that your, your title is quite exciting, we're all waiting to hear what you have to say, we're going to hand over to you. Thanks, Juanita, and, uh, and a huge privilege to, to be with you all and Renata to be able to share a platform with you again. What a joy. So we see the world through our own complexity filters. Um, and I wonder if we could maybe bring up the slide presentation at this point. And uh, one of the most liberating things I ever learned uh, in leadership development is that 90% of the time we are wrong, 
and that we see the world through our own complexity and filters. I've developed a passion, and thank you if we can go to the next slide, I've developed a passion for how we lead in a post-pandemic world. And the model you see in front of you, the modus quantum uh, creative tension, um, I've highlighted culture as being one of the key enablers for business uh, and indeed the sectors at large. But for good culture to thrive, we need to understand how we navigate the leadership and its complexities. Leadership ultimately relies on human beings. It requires a deep understanding of human behavior and organizational dynamics. As you will know, organizations today face ever increasing challenges. And so how do we overcome these challenges? We have to center our thoughts on how leaders lead. And so effective leadership becomes more critical than ever. What we're talking about today is the fact that leaders do have a blind spot when it comes to the shadow self. And so we're going to explore that next slide, please. Leaders create culture, culture drives behavior, and behavior produces results. Next slide, uh, if you don't mind. And the next slide. So setting the scene. Good culture should be an enabler for growth. It is a fact that a bad culture can lead to poor performance, or indeed, if we think about what it is we want to do in organizations, you want to be able to embrace something called discretionary energy. In other words, where, where your teams are engaged, where employees are engaged, and they give more because they're happy to give more. And that is an by really good culture. Healthy culture equals healthy growth. But what about leaders and their self-awareness? If leaders had greater self-awareness and self-reflecting behavior, wouldn't we be able to drive a healthier culture? Now, Hofstede and cultural dimensions is something we'll draw on this morning and the link to leaders and their growth. And of course, we're going to bring Jung into the conversation today. Now, I have to say, it's light touch. We, we haven't got the time today to go deep dive into Jung, but uh, Renata in her reflections, no doubt will draw out some of those elements. And also just want to acknowledge the presence of Herbie, who's also a Jungian coach. And so Herbie, lovely to have you with us. So, 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 so what, what does this, why does it matter? You know, what, what are we, what are we on about here? Next slide, please. Well, it's because culture is the shadow of the leader. If the leader sets the wrong culture, that's the shadow that is broadcast across an organization. And I suppose as leaders, as responsible leaders, the question we ask ourselves this morning, what kind of shadow are we bringing uh, onto the world? Next, next slide, please. So Hofstede Reflections. Organizations are only as successful as their workplace cultures are strong. What are leaders actually remembered for? Question mark. Organizational cultures can be defined as the unique way in which members of an organization relate to each other. The organization and the roles that they play within it and indeed their external environment. And if you recall that model I showed you right up front, the external environment now is a post pandemic environment. And so how do we navigate now? What is the ask of leaders now? Hofstede says they influence how employees perceive their organization, how they behave within it, and how the organization conducts itself as a result. Organizational culture plays right through the value chain of an organization. And so it's fundamental we get that right. Now, when a culture is well developed, it fosters a positive attitude amongst employees and maximizes their motivation. So that is that discretionary energy element that I referred to before. Thank you. Next slide. So the shadow side of leadership. What kind of shadow are we uh, casting upon the organization or indeed the world at large? We only need to look at the world today to understand the key differentiator between egocentric leadership and poor leadership and what stands out as good examples of leadership. And so the shadow of power, the shadow of privilege, the shadow of deceit, the shadow of the ego, 
or the shadow of irresponsibility. Now, we're here this morning because we want to focus on responsible leadership. But responsible leadership, I cannot overemphasize, relies on, lead on leaders being self-reflecting, self-correcting, or indeed, dare I say it, falling in love with the shadow self, understanding the shadow self. Let's move on. Next slide, please. So setting the scene, leaders leading in complexity. We've already set the scene that leaders lead in and, and they do so in a world of own complexity filters. There is a complexity of a post-pandemic world and so how we lead in a post-pandemic world. So the leadership shadow theory is a relatively new approach to leadership. Jung has been around for a while as we are here, but actually this reflection on how leaders lead and understanding the shadow self. It offers a unique perspective on how leaders can better develop their skills and their abilities to serve their organizations and stakeholders and ultimately be better leaders. So the question this morning is, we all want to be better leaders, right? So why don't we spend more time reflecting on our leadership style, our characteristics, understanding both the good and the bad and how that plays out uh, in an organization. Next slide. So what is the shadow self within a leadership context? Leadership shadow refers to the unconscious aspects of a leader's personality that influence their behavior and decision-making. And in fact, you only need to look at an organization in stress and to see how a leader leads when they are stressed. What is the expectation of responsible leaders? Well, the responsibility is to understand that leadership shadow self. What I say, how I measure, how I act, or what, indeed when, I, when I'm under stress, how I prioritize. That includes leadership traits, habits, and tendencies, often hidden from the leader's self-awareness that impact their leadership style. And these traits, um, and I've been quite intentional about this this morning, may be more visible to the teams the leaders are accountable to. And I've drawn out accountability here today because I think leadership is changing. It is less about rank and file. It is less about uh, uh, control and command it is far more about uh, a meritocracy, a democracy type system. And it is far more about leaders accepting their accountability to the people that they lead. Next slide. So what is the shadow self uh, and Jung's contribution? The shadow self is the, the center or the self is the center of the personality or psyche, your conscious awareness. The shadow, and we all have this. We all have this and nobody's exempt. Is the dark and emotional aspects of your psyche. Think about when this comes out, how it plays out in home life, in work life. The anima, which is the unconscious feminine, and I know Renata might want to bring one or two reflections into this. The animus, the unconscious masculine. Masculine and feminine energies play out in the workplace. Or persona, the mask you wear to show the world while you protect your inner self. Leaders are vulnerable. They are vulnerable, and you know we need to understand that. Or indeed, the hero, a part of the psyche that you can over, that can overcome evil and destruction. How often, as leaders, do we have to play the hero role? What about the wise old man, a personification of the self that contains your wisdom? We all know the wise old man in organisations. We all know the wise old man within self. Or indeed, the trickster, a childish part of your psyche that needs gratification. So this is the elements that Jung brings to the debate. Next, style. Uh, next uh, slide, thank you. So um, really what I wanted to highlight here is what are we at our best and what are we at our worst? Um, and you know, this is recorded, so, so feel free to, to look at this again. You know, moving from the confident to the arrogant, from the decisive to the impatient, from the competitive to the controlling. Think about who you are under stressful situations. What kind of leadership style do you exhibit? Or proactive to reactive, creative to compliant, mutual accountability to over-reliance on the leader. And as I say, this is real light touch stuff this morning. We don't have time to go into the great depths of it, but use this opportunity to explore. Next slide, please. So 
Jung's reflections and contribution to the world is to understand the collective unconsciousness, the archetypes and human experience. These archetypes play out every day in corporate life. Dream analysis and interpretation of symbols, understanding extroversion and introversion. The complex, a term coined by Jung to refer to psychic content and word association, or individuation, the process of becoming whole and integrated, and then understanding synchronicity. Thank you, next slide. So Hofstetter, Hofstetter, as we know, looked at elements like culture and power distance, how culture plays out in organizations, individualism versus collectivism, masculinity versus femininity. And this is where I think there's some synchronicity with how Jung sees the world. Or indeed, uh, uncertainty avoidance index, or uh, term versus long-term versus short orientation, or indeed indulgence versus restraint. And so I would uh, draw several elements from this today as we focus on how we build good culture. What Hofstede was doing was saying, it, in order to be a responsible leader, be aware of how these cultural dimensions play out, where you play in these cultural dimensions, and indeed where your leadership style is centered. Thank you. Next slide. And so bringing Hofstede and Jung together as we draw this portion to a close is individuation. It's the process of becoming whole and integrated with the shadow self. In other words, every leader has a shadow self, understand it, lean into it. Leading effectively requires intimate knowledge of self. That's what responsible leadership is. Leaders have cultural blind spots. Optimism bias, a really great book if you ever uh, want to read. And Slava Kubotova introduced this book to me. And that was The Art of Thinking Clearly. Well, the basic premise of the book is we don't think clearly and that we're led by our own optimism bias um, and we're led by uh, our own personality traits. Leaders work from a place of hero or imposter complex. This leads to behavioral traits that foster culture. Which kind of culture are you fostering? And leaders in a post-pandemic sphere of leadership require new levels of resilience and cultural barometers. Thank you. Next slide. And so finally, it's all about inclusion modeling. It's all about micro coaching, understanding the purpose that you're driving for, understanding the purpose you're engaging with. It is about learning agility. It is about uh, intentional culture architecture. What kind of culture are we architecting for? It is about building lasting sustainability sustainability for the greater good. And it is about building lasting good culture, human-centric culture. Thank you, next slide. And so our response as we wrap up is awareness of the shadow self. It's mindfulness, it's stop, reflect, integrate and navigate and lead with courage. It is about embracing vulnerability. Leaders don't have to be strong all the time. They need to understand the shadow self. It is about practicing empathy, continual learning and mastery, cultural architects and developed dimensions, i.e. Hofstede, and consider leadership developmental needs. Final slide. So every leader casts a shadow. So be aware of the fact that people will do what you do. And I think the, the emphasis today for responsible leadership is become the kind of leader that people would follow voluntarily, even if you had no title or position. And I just absolutely love, love this final little picture. Unmask your shadows to stand in your greatness. And you are great when you acknowledge the human self, when you acknowledge the shadow self and integrate and learn from it. Thank you very much. Thank you, George. Um, I think we all fluctuate between the good and the bad. Um, and my take up from this is I think the most important point for all of us is to self-reflect. Um, if you self-reflect, then you can correct. Um, so that's my takeaway point. Time for me to go and do introspection, I think. Um, <laughs> Renata, we will ask you now to reflect on uh, George's presentation, please. Renata, are you with us? I think we're on some mute again. There you go. Thank you so much, George. You gave us some wonderful nuggets um, as a catalyst to um, base our thinking on. Um, one of the things I'd like to say is anybody looking to do an, a doctorate or a second doctorate really should look at denial 
um, and it's not a river in Egypt, as we say, um, because denial is what stands between our ability to see ourselves as we are um, versus how we think we are. Your, George, your first point was we see the world as we are. Um, I think sometimes reducing things to basics is, is so important. Anything that irritates us in another means that we should have a look at ourselves and see what it is. So if we happen to be someone who is a giver and we look at people who are particularly selfish, that is not a judgment we should make. It is perhaps a reflection of the lack of self-care within ourselves. Your next point was that we spoke about having blind spots. I think we need to define what a blind spot is. A blind spot is based on a belief system. So let's have a look quickly at what is the definition of a belief system. It's the sum total of facts, concept, information, experiences, and prejudices that we have gathered throughout life. Now, sadly, our belief system is something that we carry with us and we don't review it. The reality is that in a changing world, which is our current context, faster and faster we go, we need to review our belief systems for applicability. Another point, defining culture. In essence, it's how we do things around here. Anyone wanting to assess the culture of an organization should by all means avoid the organization's brand and mission statement because that is a sales strategy. They should rather get as close as they could to people in terms of all levels of the hierarchy and ask them how things are done around here before deciding to move to a new division or to a new company. What is healthy? Can we really assume that a healthy culture will result in healthy production? I need to question this because healthy is a very, very egocentric and self-centric concept. What I see as healthy may not be healthy for you. So I think as a leader, we need to understand what the drivers and motivators are in the people around us. We may have people who are more narcissistic, and we call them shock politicians, who are driven by ego and winning. If that's going to get somebody to be productive, we need to position them accordingly in that kind of silo of work. If somebody is needing collaboration, communication, responsibility, support, entrepreneurial freedom, then that is how we need to position them to perform at their best. Leaders can only lead others as far as they've taken themselves. And unfortunately, our cognition stands in the way of our doing so. For me, the reality is that self-individuation is the integration of masculine and feminine. I'd like to point something out here. If you are a woman in a masculine situation with a particularly weak masculine leadership, your masculine tendencies will come out and you will lose your feminine self, which ultimately will catch up with you in emotions such as anxiety and depression, and you will need to recapture the feminine self. If you are a man who is unconscious of their feminine within them, you will react to anything that is feminine and attack it, attack it and be repelled by it. So masculine is the spirit and feminine is the soul. And what organizations are missing is the soul. So an investigation of what anima and animus is and the integration thereof is absolutely critical. The shadow, and I would say that that really is the shadow, is the lack of integration of masculine and feminine, because only in collaboration and respect of those two working together can we reach our ultimate potential. Definitely, we have to focus on behavior. A crisis is a situation left unmanaged. Behavior of our employees is what we need to look at. Are they displaying power issues, inadequacy issues, revenge issues? That is a call for help. We should not react. We should respond helpfully. And organizations are driven 80% by poor or good communication. 
I think the contribution of young We might just have lost Renata's signal there. But I think the point um, Renata was making on communication is absolutely vital. Um, and again, that relies on leadership being really intentional, um, you know, loads of self-awareness and how we communicate in organisations. Yeah, here is his archetypes, a deep, deep down each other. I think we might have signal issues there. Yes, definitely. She is in and out a little bit, but I think it will stabilize shortly. Yeah, fair enough. Good, Juanita. I think we might have might have lost. Think... Uh, okay, um, but uh, again, yeah, I think I think her points landed well, um, and. Uh, you know, who would have thought about the integration of the masculine and the feminine energies in the workplace uh, and what that actually means? Yeah. So, Renata, thank you. I Hi, think George, can you hear me? We've got you back. Lovely. Okay. I'm, I'm close to the end here. I think Jung's contribution of the archetypes is the most wonderful gift to leaders. And you'll be interested to note that I think investigating the archetypes with regard to those that are and repel each other is where there would be wonderful acumen for people understanding. But the interesting thing is that there's very little written, if anything, on which archetypes attract or repel one another. And my last contribution would be we have to be very careful of ageism with regard to coaching. We need to keep every experienced, wise, elderly person as coaches because be assisting those that are retired and don't know what to do using their brains that they've spent a lifetime fostering and the youth who don't have the deep levels of wisdom and competence who could benefit from those who are older so i think there would be ma magic in molding those two together thank you so much and also thank you very very much for your contribution um now we can open the floor for questions um, I have one question already for you. Um, how do you make it, make good in a credible way, acceptable for others, the fact that you have shown your shadow self for years with a negative impact to your team members at work, to an organization as a whole? Um, George, would you like to respond to that question? I think I'm going to ask Renata. I think Renata might have, a, have some insights into this one, and okay. then uh, by all means I'll come in as well. Yeah. All good. Renata, over to you. I think... I think we're talking about um, Elizabeth Kubler-Ross here in a process of endings. So denial, anger, bargaining, depression, acceptance, loss of the familiar is endings, transition plus people. I would simply gather an honest forum and talk about what has been and what needs to be and encourage sharing in that regard. I would not sweep things under the carpet. I would allow for free flow and honesty and integrity in the process of future development. Thanks, Renata. Uh, and maybe just an additional contribution. I think there's great, um, there's great wealth and uh, uh, integrity uh, in, in owning the shadow self in owning times where the shadow self has manifested um, and and exploring why that happened what is to be learned from it and then to Renata's point that sort of that integration and 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 holism that that comes from from those reflections so, yeah. thanks George do we have any more questions from the floor You know, recognizing it's a it's a big topic. It's a pretty big topic. It <laughs> is a big topic, and we have quite a couple of comments in the chat saying this should be delved into much deeper. 
um, because leadership shadow eventually becomes your leadership legacy. So um, this is something that definitely should be going. And, and, and there's also a focus on, on the retired experience. And I think yes. a lot of times that is neglected. Um, people retire and they leave. Um, Annette asks, could we use our action learning method to address the discovery and healing of your shadow self? So, Renat, I think we're getting into uh, reflection circles here um, and reflecting in safe spaces uh, around leadership vulnerabilities. And action learning is a great way, Annette, I think, of, of exploring, exploring a topic of leadership uh, and, uh, and reflection. Renata, any thoughts that you have around reflecting as we well, together? Yeah. I think optimal learning is kind of static and we all have different approaches to learning. So action learning involves all the elements of kinesthetic learning. So role play, modeling, um, observed mentoring, knowledge, skills, facts, concepts, principles. I think the more that we integrate these, the more the individuals observing or reading or being involved would take away. So my answer would be yes. And the, I think we need to remember that complexity is ignorance and simplicity and the ability to convey things simply is intelligence. And I, I think, I think it's absolutely right. Thank you. George, you can go ahead. Yeah, That's I was just you thought, you know, um, I mean, Renata has sparked a thought with me in the, you know, in, in, you know, volatility in uncertain times, which is where we are now, and that's where we're having to lead. The skill of leadership now, and Renata, I think you were starting to so get into this, is communicating, you know, and, and so communicating a compelling vision, com communicating an honest vision, and abstracting complexity into simplicity is where I heard you go. Um, and I think that's what's being asked of leaders now, you know. Um, you know, the oft used word about authentic leadership, it's almost overused, but actually authenticity and leading in volatility is is a is an interesting topic in its own right. Yeah. George, George there was oh, sorry, sorry, carry on, carry on, Renata. George, there was one point I wanted to add to the leadership shadow, and that was the overly responsible enabling leader. I see a lot of that as an issue, particularly more so in in senior women leaders who transfer the mother role into the workplace. Um, there is such a thing as being overly responsible, not just irresponsible as a weakness. Interesting, thank you. Yeah. That's and, an interesting concept. Is there a really hero complex in that? The need to Definitely. be- Definitely. Yeah. Look, I think it's, you know, whether you're talking victim or whether you're talking hero, if you're benefiting from it yourself, that's your shadow. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Thank you. Question for you, George. What about the pandemic expedited this move towards the highlight on the shadow self? Mm. Great comment, because I think... You know, which, uh, you know we did a, a talk more recently for the uh, Worshipful Company of Chartered Institute of Secretaries, okay, and the the context was which board on its risk radar had a global pandemic? Nobody, you know, or you know, with with notable exceptions, I should think. And so, who really prepared for a global pandemic? Who really prepared for a complete shutdown of business, or indeed the emergence of new business? And so, you know, and, and therefore, the pressure and the vulnerability of leaders was exacerbated. Uh, it was brought to the fore in a big way because traditional methods of problem resolution required new focus. Um, and Annette, I think, I think this is where action learning comes into its own as well. You know, a space where you can ex explore a problem together because you don't necessarily have the answer. And so, so that uh, Juanita is where is 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 I think the pandemic created a catalyst for a new breed of leaders, same people, but a new breed. Um, and okay. you know, so, what does that look like now? Mm -hmm. 
Correct. Especially since you had said that under pressure, people switch from the good to the bad. So that was the reason I asked the question about the pandemic, because they, I think everybody was under severe stress. Indeed, indeed. Look at business schools. Today is a consequence, this meeting is a consequence of the pandemic, something we thought was impossible before, but actually, you know, how we reinvent ourselves and, and how we explore together and learn together. So I would, I would argue that I think executive education has taken a leap in the right direction uh, and exploratory conversations and learning platforms and, and, and. So, you know, one, one could go on uh, uh, wax lyrical about these things. Yeah, I have an interesting question from Vim. He says, what's the deep reason that politics is so masculine? Oh, <laughs> All right. If you if you revisit the point I made very quickly earlier, um, feminine is soul. So feminine is where the honesty honesty rests. So masculine, and this is not about male or female. It is masculine, feminine. So if someone is driven by masculine competition, rational log logistics systems, winning, striving. Um, and they have not acknowledged or integrated feminine into themselves, they will be repelled by the feminine and dive more deeply into the masculine behavior, which is denying, um, hiding, strategizing, anything and everything to be competitive and to win, and very acculturated by most traditions and societies that that's the masculine role. Mm -hmm. Answer your question, Bill. You know, I, 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 if I may, I think there's a there's a call for more compassionate, empathetic, spirit-led leadership now across the globe. Um, and I, you know, the the events in Gaza, uh, the events in Ukraine, you know, and the world's response to this, I think, is is very telling in terms of the types of leaders that we have across the globe. Where have all the great statesmen and stateswomen gone? Where are they? They're there. We, need to, you know, we just need to uh, make sure we vote them into power. <laughs> um, 8.53 is approaching. We, do we have one final question for George and Renata before we close the session for today? No? Okay, in that case, we will see you all next week. Um, next week, we will be at the, the topic would be staying ahead of the game, continuous innovation. And that obviously is under the pillar of change leadership. I want to thank you, uh, George. Thank you, Renata, for your contribution this morning. Very interesting. I think we've all got a lot to go and reflect on um, and have a look at ourselves. Thank you very much for your time. And thank you very much for everybody that attended this morning. It was nice hosting you.